So in the last episode of Isla Pali, we managed to go from the bunker already into some beautification of the area between the upcoming hotel resort and the rest of the park and just did some gardening work to basically connect those two areas. And in today's episode, we're gonna go into the actual hotel resort. So sit back, relax and enjoy the next episode of Isla Pali. Alright, here we go in the next episode of Isla Pali and you can already see from the very beginning of this episode um, I have already done something and before we jump into some other topics um, I just want to quickly mention that this is um, again some split footage a little bit of uh, the old build and then the second part of the video which is the way longer part is already done in the new update of Plant Coaster and if you haven't noticed this Plant Coaster released a free update which was basically a bug fix uh, update but, but honestly this may well be one of the best updates ever released on Planet Coaster, um, simply because this update fixed a ton of things uh, regarding the Toolmaker's tool uh, Theme Maker's Toolkit thing. Uh, still two months, we have it already, or three, and I still can't pronounce the, the name correctly. However, it really helps to improve the game. So my game loading time went from about six minutes to like 16 seconds or something. Uh, the opening time from the menu went from like a minute to basically five to six seconds. And the coolest thing is once the menu is open, the items are available in a second. Um, so you will easily see in even in the time lapse that um, the items are available pretty much uh, in an instant, which is awesome. Um, in real time, it's still a little bit, so you, you might consider not to uh, leave a building too often. So once you're in a building, though, it all runs like a like a charm, and we have always to consider that I'm in Eastern Nepali, which is already a pre-filled in park. I, I just checked lately, we are about 60,000 uh, pieces, which is, which is okay, I guess, um, which is simply, I think, due to the um, many TMT items, uh, it, it reduced actually the amount of pieces in the park, which I believe is a good thing. However, we still need to manage uh, a better piece count, I guess. Or, like, no, maybe we, we should put it another way. The, the game still needs to handle a lot of pieces um, still better. So hopefully they're gonna um, improve that uh, further in the future. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty confident they will do and pretty optimistic. So uh, yeah. However, there is another topic we definitely need to talk about and this is the little billboard competition. And uh, I'll make it short here, the winner is Lucas Brown, uh, the Minister of Vibration, with his awesome quote regarding our volcano. Uh, I believe it's a deserved winner. So he basically came up with the quote that, um, hey, come visit Isana Pali, our volcano doesn't erupt that often, which I, I just love the little bit of irony in there, the sarcasm and this, you know, it's it's really that what, what we want to carry on here. We're going to have fun uh, with the community and, and be, we you can also be that little bit of sarcastic and f make just fun of all the things um, that we put in. So we don't always have to be that serious. I mean, this has to be a very hyper-realistic park, but that doesn't mean we, we can bring and some fun and uh, I, I really like this and you guys obviously voted so most people um, and I you know this time it wasn't really that it was like a proper election or a pro proper voting and I'm, um, I'm I'm quite I'm quite confident that you guys will still uh, can or you, you will still um, deal with it like a proper voting even though it wasn't one um, I, I just you know went through all the comments and and just try to gasp what you guys um, are feeling about the billboards and I guess most of you um, or in fact most of you like the one from Lucas the most um, I think I want to give a special prize to Kane uh, who's potentially one of the only ones um, speaking English uh, American English as his um, mother tongue and still he was the one with the most uh, spelling mistakes in there so props to you that you managed this and uh, I'm I'm a hundred percent no I'm a thousand percent sure that if I should have done a German one um, in a group of non-German people that I would have been the one with the most mistakes in a German text 
either way so I can totally relate to that and uh, I think it's just a little fun side note <laughs> that you managed to bring in as many mistakes as I would do in German so because I suck at German I've honestly I uh, there is a reason why I wrote all my final exams in English why I wrote my master thesis and my bachelor thesis in English there is a reason why I tend to work on English-speaking clients more often than on German clients. I am just pretty fucking bad at German, I have to say. Like, honestly speaking, obviously you wouldn't really um, notice that because, you know, speaking is always different than talking. And I would also say that my written English is way more educated and way more serious than my uh, spoken one. I, I also tend to have the feeling that... Um, the English, like the scientific English is way easier than a scientific German English. Uh, wait, a scientific German, here we go. Um, because it, it is just... I don't know, we have so many words in German to explain the same thing over and over again. So like this is also why German politi uh, politicians are so weird at the time. Because they can talk about things for two hours and don't really say anything. Because they just used a million words for the same thing 20 times. So this is what German is about if you go into a more elaborate German written language. Um, and that's the cool thing about the English language. I mean, still English speaking people are like, if you look at Shakespeare, for example, or something like that, it's insane how many words there are in, but there's still way less words than in German. And uh, this is, I mean, that's even fact. If you just look into the vocabulary in, in general, I guess, German even has nearly 50% um, more words in the language in general and uh, it's just insane and this is why I hate it and so um, yeah just coming off the topic of uh, the billboards I just wanted to quickly explain this little thing because I really found that a funny side note um, because I I enjoyed I enjoyed writing my thesis in English to be honest I enjoyed looking more into my English skills also increasing my vocabulary. Um, I feel also that in my videos I try to improve my English not, a, not only in the way that I try to say less um and uh and uh and then, you know try to make it more fluent. I feel that my English is already pretty fluent but um, I want to make it also more variable so that it, it, it kind of not always uses the same words and sometimes I, I listen to my commentary it's not bad but sometimes I, I even get annoyed myself because I'm using too often actually obviously or whatsoever these little filling words right in written language this is not too big of a deal you just read through the chapter one or two times and then you come up with a few uh, synonyms of it and then it's fine and after reading that a few times it's it's pretty much okay because you have exchanged like half of the words you're using all the time but in uh, in spoken language it's all a bit different you need to force yourself to make more little breaks in between like just breathe instead of saying um and uh and so on i have i've done many courses on speaking better i'm a big fan of of good speaking in general i can't really do that too good in german again same thing i I don't really want, I I don't know, it's, in German I always feel like too stiff and too German, if that makes any sense, uh, if I use all these very elaborate words and like I'm sounding like a stiff asshole, <laughs> so to say, that kind of, you know, feels better than the other ones and I just have the feeling that in English it's way more fun to speak good, to underline what you really want to uh, want to say it really makes you a better speaker and it still feels somewhat positive and uh, sympathetic and polite whereas in german i always have the feeling if you go too much into scientific talking or into elaborate talking or like you know using these very scientific um, wordings and phrases and whatnot it makes you feel arrogant and from top down somewhat, you know, and I really don't like that. I, I always feel uncomfortable listening to it. I always feel uncomfortable doing that because you easily move into a kind of flow that makes you talk also a bit more like from top down. Um, which I'm not a big fan of. I'm, I'm usually and like always in everything I do I'm a big fan in sharing and in and being on eye level because I feel that Even in I think there's never been a time that is that important as it is right now 
to share things. Like, the share economy is not just a word. It makes us all better. There is, like, no simple way to know everything right now. There is no... They can't... They can't... They cannot be an expert on anything right now. Because even if I would say I'm an expert on building in Plant Coaster, there are a million people that have other ideas and other skills and uh, they bring it in on a different way. And they're not better or worse or whatever. They're just different in the same thing because there are so many ways to get it done, right? There is not that kind of... The, the best or the best in anything um, but there is like the best team there can be a best team which I'm a big fan of and this is why I also like to try and train myself in speaking I think I, I talk way too long about speaking now but I hope you are a little bit at least interested in it um, at least I am so I'm sharing it with you talking of share economy however I forgot that uh, Lucas Brown uh, you noticed last time already that you are one of the chosen ones within the competition and now you are the winner so please make sure that you do write me an email uh, to rudy.rencamo at googlemail.com or gmail.com however you want and uh, just state that you want it that you heard it in the commentary so i can send you the bus driver 2019 key and um, hopefully you'll have a lot of fun with this game uh, i have no idea if that's great but i oh, i have to tell a little story here i am um, I played <laughs> Landwirtschaftssimulator, which is, I think in English it is, is that even a word? Agriculture Simulator? I guess it's uh, Agriculture Simulator, whatever this is called. It seems to be pretty boring, but actually it is somewhat weird. It really drags you in and it makes super, it makes you feel super cozy and I don't know, it's, it's weird. I've never experienced something like that. It's not that I stopped the game and was like, oh no, I need to play it again. But while playing it, it was like, oh, hmm, let me just do this field. And now, uh, let me just feed the cows. And oh no, let me just carry that around. And you're basically just driving along a country road with your cargo, which you just got from the field. And you're just like driving and there's like nothing happening. And it still is somewhat relaxing, which is super weird but it's anyways it, it works so maybe the bus driver simulator 2019 can carry the same thing at least i hope however the last uh, minutes of this episode i want to dedicate to what i've done here because um i didn't really talk too much about this hotel because we will do in the next episode it's already recorded so please let me know all of your feedback um for the hotel anyways because i might do a little bit of uh um, bit for the next episode at the end, um, changing some things and, you know, adapting some of your feedback. But for now, um, I leave it as it is and I will, this is a news because many of you asked and I try to do it for the next episode. I don't know how long I can take it, but now as the game boots way quicker again, I can do this. So you get some cinematics at the end. And in today's cinematics, you might potentially be a bit spoiled for next episode, which is simply because I forgot to, um, record these, uh, at the end of the last episode and so I only have the save file from today which is already um, plus the next bit recorded. I try to find some angles that uh, do suit um, you know the um, the task to not show you too much of what has been done in the next episode so that's it but yeah I think many of you asked for it so hopefully you'll enjoy that having some cinematics at the end of this episode. I also try to level the sound so I definitely hear you guys that I want to make this all a bit more level out so you're not um, hit by surprise when there is the end of this episode or like the beginning which is still a thing I actually wanted to achieve but however I you know you guys ask for it I try to deliver and here we go however that's the end of this episode I hope you enjoyed my little bit of a weird talk about talking and I uh, hope you will be here on Sunday again for the next episode of Eastern Apali until then have a great weekend and see ya bye bye No.